Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third in our series of monitoring report support workshops. Um, these have been a project of the CBUILD team to provide template reports based on work done by managers uh, around the country who have been finding good success in their own reporting, trying to take some of their skills, some of their insights, uh, and incorporate them into reports that are tied to the CBUILD template policies. Um, as always with all these reports, I uh, encourage you to take what you can find here that's useful, even if the report itself or the policy itself doesn't exactly match uh, what your board's policy has in it. You'll find a lot of overlap as possible. Um, and just as a reminder, um, our goal is that these templates are useful uh, in both making the manager's job easier uh, in reporting, making the, the data collection, incorporation, a, a simpler, smoother process, and also trying to present things uh, in terms and in uh, um, formats that are easy for directors to read and to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, oh, I should start introducing myself with Michael Healy here of uh, the CDS Consulting Co-op. Um, and I'm going to uh, start by going through the membership rights and responsibilities policy. And not going to read through all aspects of it, but I'm going to just highlight a, a few parts that uh, you might find particularly interesting. Um, again, as I said, uh, if you find things in here that match exactly what you're doing in your policies, great. You might find, again, just parts of this that you can pull out and use in your own policies. Uh, in this case, um, we're going to use the membership enrollment form um, as a piece of data uh, later on in the report. So that's why it would be considered an attachment. There's not actually a real form attached here. Uh, but manager would attach such a form. Uh, so in this policy, um, the global policy basically just starts with a general proscription about making sure members are informed of their rights and responsibilities. And so in the interpretation uh, here, the manager has reminded uh, the board and the manager, everyone involved, that the, the rights and responsibilities are primarily spelled out in bylaws and in board policy, um, and that there are some specific uh, rights and responsibilities, investing equity, receiving patronage dividends, attending the annual meeting, voting in elections, running for the board. Um, and then the manager here has specified um, a little more clearly that the running for the board is not an operational um, job, that that's something that really the board itself is primarily responsible for. Uh, then going on to say that there is more information about some of these rights and responsibilities in the sub-policies. So here in the global, uh, we're just going to be reporting on the parts of these rights and responsibilities that either are not the board's responsibility or are not going to be covered in the sub-policies below. Uh, so here, um, the manager is focused on two things. One, notifying that, uh, one, giving notification to members, making sure the information is there. Uh, and then second, using as data some measurement to indicate that members are, are taking advantage of their rights and responsibilities. So it's two sides of the, of the same coin here. Um, it's a nice way of, of thinking about this, uh, this policy. Uh, so then on the next page, we're going to look at the data that goes with those two interpretations um, here. The membership enrollment form is data referring to, if we go back up, sorry for the scrolling back and forth, but the data that members are informed one is through the membership enrollment form. And a very easy way to show that is to actually give the form itself to the board as an attachment. Uh, the second bit of data is articles in the newsletter. And rather than give the board a stack of articles, um, in this case, the manager is just reporting on how many articles or notices were in the newsletter over the course of the 12 months. And then also showing 
some of that data over time uh, so the board can see if this is a consistent um, pattern or maybe that there's a trend. The other half of the coin, the, the other side, was not about the giving the notice, but about whether members are participating or not. Um, and here, the manager is keeping track of several bits of information, but also making a point to note that the first column here is just a bit of uh, FYI, so that directors have a context for these other numbers, but it's not compliance data. And it's really the, the data in these last two columns um, about the number of ballots cast and the number of people attending meetings that the manager is counting as compliance information. Uh, some managers are having um, good reporting skills using graphs. This is a place where a graph might even work better than a table, um, showing how these numbers change over time. Now, as we're going through these uh, reports. I want to encourage anyone who's online to um, ask questions. You have uh, in the sidebar of your um, GoToWebinar uh, toolbox there a place to type in questions. I encourage you to type in any question you have there. And uh, my lovely assistant, Joel Brock, will um, either uh, write the question out, uh, send it on to me, or give you a chance to say it uh, on air, um, or he will ask it aloud on your behalf. Um, so lots of different ways, but it starts with you having a question that you'd like to have answered. So again, welcome to everybody who's here, and I encourage you to make use of that uh, toolbar, toolbox there uh, from GoToWebinar so that you can ask questions as we go. So we're just going to continue now looking at this report. We're going to go through these two reports relatively quick um, unless there are specific questions that you would like answered. Um, so this next piece is now the sub policies about membership, member rights and responsibilities. And uh, the I'm not going to highlight too many details here. Um, I encourage you to go back and read this um, when you have a little more time. But again, the the manager is trying to figure out how to create operational definitions that derive from the board's uh, policy. One thing you'll notice in both these reports today is that the manager in, in these templates isn't always just trying to give um, an exact definition of every single phrase or sentence um, that the board has written, but the manager is first interpreting the, the intent of the board and then going on to create specific operational definitions that might or might not tie exactly to every line of the board's policy. So it's an interesting uh, thought about formatting. Um, kind of uh, gives the manager a little bit more room to maneuver in, in thinking about how to present this information in a coherent way. So in this case, this is about the member equity system, uh, the part of member rights and responsibilities that's about contributing equity um, and having equity refunded. So again, the, the manager is using the enrollment form itself as a um, piece of a definition and a piece of data. Uh, and the manager is describing how he or she would refund equity um, unless specific criteria are not met. And then the data um, will follow. The third definition that's a very good one for boards to see is that not only will the manager carry out this system, but we'll let the board know immediately if there are any, uh, any issues within the system. Uh, so we have the, the manager operationalizing essentially all the work of uh, collecting and refunding member equity. Um, one of the criteria that the manager has stated in the operational definitions here is that financial conditions um, will be met. And so here the manager is referring to the fact that over the course of the reporting period, the 12 months, there were four financial conditions and activities reports submitted. Um, in this case, the manager is saying each of them showed compliance. And so we, the co-op, um, was in compliance with the financial conditions policies. Nice way to refer to data that doesn't have to be compiled just for this report. 
Uh, and again, here's a table where there is some information um, that is FYI, in this case, all the columns except for the final column. And what the manager is showing here is, is, is in reference to the criteria, the, the operational definition that the total paid in equity will not decrease. And so showing over time, over, over years, how that number hopefully, uh, in this case, if it was showing compliance, would increase from year to year. Again, reminding the board that some, some of this information is FYI, again, helping the board see the, the whole picture, but that compliance is based only on the total paid in equity. The second part of the CBIL template policy uh, specifically refers to the patronage dividend system. Uh, and uh, essentially empowering the, the manager, delegating responsibility to the manager for operationalizing much of that work. Um, so here, uh, the, the GM is saying that the first part of the definition is that it's the GM's responsibility to present a report to the board um, that includes these ingredients um, so that the board could make a, a determination um, so here the board wants to have enough information to determine if patronage dividends are warranted and what amount uh, sh sh should be refunded. Um, and so the GM is saying, here I'm going to present you this information um, within two months of the end of the fiscal year. Now depending on when your fiscal year is, you may not present it in August, but it might be another month. Um, also that because the board has specified that the this, all these actions should comply with IRS regulations. The manager is pointing out a couple different places here um, where the 20% uh, refund amount that the IRS requires and here that all, all refunds are made within eight and a half months. The manager is using those as criteria. And then the, the data is pretty straightforward once you got those definitions. Um, now sometimes this report uh, that presents the patronage dividend information might come hand in hand depending on the timing of, of your calendar. Um, sometimes these two reports go hand in hand, um, but still this monitoring report would refer to the other information without necessarily containing all that information within the monitoring report. So that's really the, the gist of the, the uh, member rights and responsibilities policy report. Again, I encourage you to um, ask questions. If you have any, feel free to type a question into the uh, GoToWebinar toolbox there. Um, and I'm feel free to ask questions about this uh, at any time, but I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to the uh, B5 Treatment of Consumers report so that you can see how that one looks. Um, so today we're really, the, the pair is, one, one is about um, members, the other about consumers. And so here I'm just going to show an example of um, a manager reporting non-compliance on part of the policy. Um, this statement, this, this whole uh, box of information at the top of each report is consistent from report to report. There are a variety of ways that managers have found to introduce or to head their reports. This is one that's pretty simple, pretty clear. And, and one of the keys of this uh, heading is that the manager makes a statement right at the beginning about compliance so that there's not a hundred or ten even um, statements of compliance throughout the policy, but there's one statement right at the beginning. And in this case, the manager is reporting that there is one exception to compliance, and that's going to be in the global policy. So that way, a, the, the uh, director who's reading this uh, with their feet up on the couch there at home before their board meeting, we'll make sure they sit up and pay attention to that global policy report to see what's in there. Uh, in this case, there are no attachments to the report, but again, because this heading is a, a standard heading from report to report, um, it helps that even if there isn't an attachment, the manager just notes that. Again, the consistent format helps directors uh, know what they're looking at. So this, there were two things that I found when managers were reporting on um, treatment of consumers, and 
Uh, one was about the actions that the co-op would take in order to make sure customers had a way to give input uh, suggestions, and that's covered in one of the sub-policies. Um, another was that managers were looking at uh, actual customer numbers as an indicator that customers were being treated okay, so that if the number of customers increased from year to year, that was at least an indicator that customers were being treated okay, given that customers could choose to go somewhere else if they didn't really like how they were treated or if their needs weren't being met um, in the co-op. So one bit of interpretation is that the number of customers uh, matters. Uh, and the second, this was, uh, there were a couple different managers who were finding ways to use customer survey information um, as a way to give data about responding to customer needs. This is one example. Um, it was a very nicely presented one, and, and I um, use it here uh, al almost, not quite, um, word for word. Um, it was, this was presented by uh, Tim Bartlett of Lexington Co-op. Um, and he had done a real nice job uh, deciding on what the criteria were um, by and by referring to a third party. So taking um, not just the manager saying, hey, I'm making up this survey and here's how I'll decide if, if the answer is good or not. But here Tim did a really nice job of saying, here's this survey I'm using, the tool I'm using, and here's why I'm using this particular number as a, as a criteria or as a measurement of success. So I'm not going to read through this whole paragraph here, but I thought it was really nicely presented, um, the manager explaining to the board why things were going to be looking the way they were looking. Down here to the operational definitions then that are based on that uh, interpretation, there are three things. One is that the customer count will grow. Second, uh, and this is from that, uh, that interpretation of uh, that Tim Bartlett was using, the net promoter score will be greater than 50% and that it will trend upward. So here's one way of presenting a graph about customer count. There seem to be a number of different ways of doing that. Here was one version, um, someone showing a month to month, um, but showing it for two different years. You could show three or four different years this way. Again, a number of different ways to present graphical information. I'm trying throughout the series of reports to show a variety of styles so that each manager can find one that really works for them and their board. Next, again, a table showing the data. In this case, because it's the first time the co-op is doing this, there's not much information in the table um, except to show the, the score and that it is greater than the criteria. Uh, and then part three, the trend. And here the manager is reporting no data. And so if there isn't data, there's no way to determine compliance. And so then the manager would present an explanation and plan. And now here the manager explains, why is there no data? Why can't I show you compliance? Um, and in this case, it's a pretty reasonable explanation because we just started doing this. And so we'll have more information the next time around. So again, I thought there a couple of nice uh, ideas there for presenting customer information. Here, the board, the policy is more specifically requiring system for soliciting and considering um, customer opinions, comments. And managers tended to find there were three primary uh, ideas to communicate to the board. First, that there was a system. Second, that uh, the, the opinions, the ideas that customers submitted to the system did get considered. Uh, and that then they were acted on. Um, whether or not that the managers didn't seem to need to say that the uh, suggestions were actually followed, but just that they were considered, that they were uh, looked at by someone who could act on them. Uh, so again, there are a variety of ways of presenting uh, this kind of information, but here is one nice uh, tabular form. Uh, how many comments are received? Here's a, a row for how many comments are received. And then the, those comments broken down into four different categories. Um, so again, demonstrating to the board that, yes, we are keeping track of them. Um, and in general, as most managers know, these tend to fall mostly in the realm of product requests. Um, but there are other possibilities. 
Now, here's one that was a, a nice uh, idea um, that uh, the the all the information is kept in a in, in this in this co-op in a spreadsheet, um, and so there's going to be a ton of information in that spreadsheet. Rather than supply that information as part of the board report, that's just too much of a, a dump truck kind of report. So this manager here would just say, um, the spreadsheet exists, it's available upon request. And so if, if the board felt some need to actually look at that detail, they could. Um, but it doesn't need to encumber uh, this, this report, which, as all these reports are, is pretty spare, pretty straightforward. Again, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to uh, holler up now. Or as always, feel free to contact uh, one of your C -build, favorite CBuild consultants and ask them for more uh, clarification on uh, these reports. Um, the second part of treatment of consumers had to do with safety. Uh, this is in our um, CBuild policy template. It's in a number of other board, co-op boards policies. Uh, managers tend to focus on three primary aspects, it seems like. Um, health inspections, um, accidents, uh, and recalls. And so here are, are here's a way to, to respond to each of those. Um, one, did we or did we not pass inspections? What's, what's the, the data for that? Again, not needing to actually supply to the board a copy of the inspection. Um, always knowing that as a manager you want to have that kind of information available, that kind of data, um, in case the board decides they need to do a direct inspection. Presenting in tabular form, accident information. For most co-ops, most of the time, there's not going to be a whole lot of numbers, uh, not a lot of high numbers here but again, presenting to the board what, what is happening. This uh, recall information, um, again, this is just one way of presenting this. Um, were there any product recalls? Were there any reported injuries or illness? Um, keeping the board informed of that as a food store with food safety an ongoing issue. This is one way to identify uh, one aspect of consumer safety. So again, today, these two reports are pretty straightforward. There's um, some really nice ideas that came from contributing managers. Um, and I'll wait just a couple minutes to see if uh, anyone has a question about either of the two reports. So that sounds like questions are answered well enough. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for showing up today and checking these out. I hope the reports become useful to you in your own reporting. And I look forward to sharing the next couple of reports with you next week. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. Joel, is there anything else we need to do before we sign off this afternoon? No, I think you did well. Great job. Great. Okay. So thank you, everybody, and we will see you next week.